Did you know that 90% of all uploaded YouTube videos will never reach 1,000 views? Would you have guessed this? Would you have thought, prior to seeing that headline, would you have thought that was the case? Or yeah. Would, yeah, I would say so. You would, wouldn't you? There's because, a lot of people creating content. Yeah. You know? That's because you exist on YouTube. You work in oh, YouTube. yeah. If you're an outsider, you might be surprised to see this. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people have this impression that you upload something to YouTube and people will see it. Yeah. And the truth is, it's not. No, they won't. And plus, when you see the home feed, there's like thousands of views, you know, of successful videos. You don't see the ones that have like one view or 10. Never. Yeah. Never. You're right. And it makes sense. It, it, I mean, it makes sense. If you... If it's an upstart YouTube channel, it's going to be a really risky recommendation mm -hmm. for the recommendation engine. They don't know. There's not a track record for that channel. That channel uh, presumably is new to the platform. It's got to take some time. I mean, something that we've learned being in this business, consistency is huge. You got to be consistent. You got to be reliable. They got to expect, okay, you, you know, I'm going to get content over here. Yeah. And I'm going to sort of know roughly what it's going to be. And that's going to be a healthy relationship. And it's inherently more risky for YouTube to be recommending content without the track record associated with it. And to build a fan base. To build a fan base. Yeah. And, and to figure out where it's going to make its investments. Because the recommendation engine ultimately is about business. And if it's about business, then YouTube has some sort of a responsibility to reward those business partnerships that continue to fulfill the task of selling advertising. In other words, continue to bring viewers to that to, to their website. Mm -hmm. And so if YouTube had some sort of uh, more generalized rules around this, around the way this algorithm operates for suggestions, the trouble might become that nobody, it would almost be like early days YouTube, if there wasn't enough revenue to be generated in exchange for consistency, in exchange for cons uh, consistently delivering an audience, then no one would take it seriously. Guys like us couldn't justify sitting down all the time right? because the views wouldn't be available and therefore it would be a lot more like it was in the early days. See, what's unique about YouTube is it's allowed people like ourselves to create businesses on the platform mm -hmm. the way that the thing works. And the fact that there's a healthy business underneath the content allows for you to approach content in a more professional manner than you would otherwise be able to justify. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine if it was just across the board, everything got suggested at the same rate, it would all be garbage. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at here. It would all be... Imagine it would be somebody's soccer video. It would, you know, they're just in the backyard. It would be somebody throwing a ball to their dog, like yeah. I was doing this morning. It would be now that would be fun. Don't get me wrong, but that's a different website in 2020. Right. Yeah. It's that, not the Wild West anymore. No, that's a different website. Yeah. You can go start it if you want, but you see what people do without algorithms. What it's more like, uh, what is that thing where people are on? a site and it's just people's webcams and they just scroll through it and you'd have no idea which webcam you're going to see. Omegle. Ome Omegle. 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 Yeah. yeah it, it's like, it's just madness. It's just chaos without a more sophisticated suggestion algorithm that sort of knows you and what you want and knows what's worked in the past and, and all the rest of it and, and provides you with, provides everyone involved, the viewer, the content creator with some reasonable things to expect mm -hmm. but the consequence of this sophisticated algorithm is it's really hard to start a youtube channel it's really it turns out it's really hard now to find a a, a base mm -hmm. and youtube has done a couple of things to try to improve it with like creators on the rise and these types of things right. but it's still is very small and it's just a consequence like would would exist for any medium a consequence of when you got invested in it when you were publishing and how consistent you remain so here's some statistics. Uh, you're looking at 90% of videos generate fewer than 1,000 views. And YouTube channels that reach 100,000 views on average account for 0.77% of all content. Hmm. 0.77. So total views by tier, 
The vast majority are under 1,000. 8% are 1 to 10,000. 10 to 100,000 is 2.8%. And 100,000 to a million is 0.7. 1 million to 10 million is 0.1%. So videos on the platform with between 1 and 10 million is 0.1%. It's, it's incredibly small, but you have to remember this is a platform receiving a tremendous amount of video content at all times. You're having 5 billion views every single day. 5 billion. Mm -hmm. You're having people upload videos to YouTube just to share with the family, mm -hmm. just to send a link or to store a video under Google Drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have no idea what the scale of the, all that is, which isn't really even intended to be popular or viewed by a lot of people. Does this include, I guess, uh, private views? No. Or um, unlisted videos? No. Think? No way? Eh? No, this would be listed. This would be listed views, because I know unlisted views, if you take a video unlisted, that comes off the public view count. I see. So... Now, uh, you can also, there's another chart down there that showcases how this breaks down per category with music at the top. Music is the most popular segment. You know how music videos stack tremendous views. But uh, you can check it out. Gaming is a little bit surprising in there. You can get a bit more information. But what does this tell you? What can, you, what can we take from this? I will say the same thing I said in the past when people ask me about, oh, how do you become successful on YouTube? This is completely, this is not, this is the best advice I can possibly give for anybody. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard work. It's probably harder work now than it was when I started. And uh, people underestimate how re resilient and consistent you have to be. You have to really keep going after it, even in the face of having one failure after another. Like you have to be kind of addicted to failing to screwing up. You can't look at the failures and be, and I guess this is advice for life in general. You have to almost crave the failure because the failure exposes good information. No, just embrace it. Yeah, you embrace Expect the failure it. and then you see, well, now I know how to kind of steer based on that. Without failure, you don't uncover the necessary evidence for your in order to support or inform your next action. Mm -hmm. So I would say just embrace all that and... But also, I would say, if you feel that that's not what your level of commitment is to the thing, then don't have unrealistic expectations. Publish a thing here and there and be like, why didn't I blow up yet? Hmm. There might be other platforms that are better places to do that that are, aren't as mature as YouTube, like TikTok, for example, yeah. where maybe there's more blow up factor because it's just a newer platform. Mm -hmm. So there might be a little bit more space there. YouTube's pretty established. It's insane. I've been doing this for 10 years. 10 years. Or, yeah, wow. I mean, maybe even a little bit more. It's, yeah. it's insane. 